Let's take a look at the definition of the airfoil. A body designed to provide a desired reaction force when in motion relative to the surrounding air. An airfoil's job is to bend the air around it in a way which creates lift. Airfoils come in many shapes, the most common one being the symmetrical airfoil. A symmetrical airfoil will curve the airflow around it symmetrically. An asymmetrical airfoil will curve the airflow around it asymmetrically. Usually, the asymmetrical airfoil will have a large curvature on the upper camber compared to the lower camber. It's important you familiarize yourself with airfoil phraseology early, as we use this to refer to the parts of an airfoil day to day. Let's go through it step by step. When you refer to the top side of the airfoil, use the phrasing upper camber and lower camber for the bottom part of it. The cord line is an imaginary line which goes in a straight line from the trailing edge to the leading edge. It has no purpose but for the sake of defining items such as angle of attack, angle of incidence, and so on. The camber line is a line which is drawn equidistant from the lower and upper camber. Notice how the camber line is in line with the cord line? This is due to the shape of the symmetrical airfoil. If we take a look at an asymmetrical airfoil, we can clearly see the difference between the cord line and the camber line. Look at how lift is created. We need to be familiar with two distinct principles. Bernoulli's principle and Newton's third law of motion. Bernoulli's principle describes the relationship between internal fluid pressure and fluid velocity. The main concept is that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Imagine a venturi tube which has a fluid running through it. Near the point where the cross section is reduced, the fluid will actually increase in velocity but also decrease in pressure. This is important knowledge because we use this reaction to create lift. Newton's third law of motion describes that every reaction has an equal and opposite reaction. Let's take a look at how an airfoil helps us make lift. This symmetrical airfoil is placed in an atmosphere with no wind. If we introduce any amount of wind, notice how the airflow will tend to move around the airfoil. This flow of steady air around the airfoil is referred to as laminar flow. At the moment, everything is working as intended, although we're still not creating any lift. To create lift, we need to change the pitch angle of the airfoil. The pitch angle is the angular difference between the cord line and the plane of rotation. What we do is rotate the airfoil slightly along its span. By increasing the pitch angle, we also increase the angle of attack. Angle of attack is measured by the angle between the relative wind and the cord line. The higher the angle of attack up to a point called the critical angle, the more lift we're able to produce. With the increase in pitch angle and therefore increase in angle of attack, the airflow along the upper camber has to travel a longer distance to reach the trailing edge compared to the distance the airflow along the lower camber has to travel. These two airflows will meet at the trailing edge at the same time. This means one of them has to speed up. It just happens that the airflow along the upper camber will have to speed up due to its longer travel distance. This in turn will cause a decrease in pressure along the upper camber. This is Bernoulli's principle. Now what we have is a pressure differential between the lower camber and the upper camber. This is very important because a high pressure has a tendency of moving towards a lower pressure. What you're looking at is the creation of lift. By simply redirecting the airflow along an airfoil, we've successfully made lift. After the airflow has run along the camber, it will be dumped downwards by the trailing edge. This downwards force will have an equal and opposite reaction in the opposite direction. This is Newton's third law of motion. With this knowledge in hand, we're now able to define lift. Lift is the result of a pressure differential, Bernoulli's theory, and downward deflection of air created by the passage of air over an airfoil, Newton's third law. Lastly, I want to talk about the lift formula. It looks complicated, but as pilots, we don't actually use it to calculate anything. All we need it for is to understand the variables which affect the lift component. Lift equals coefficient of lift times half times rho times velocity squared times surface area. If any of these variables are increased or decreased, the production of lift will change accordingly. The coefficient of lift can be regarded to as the angle of attack. Half is a constant. Rho refers to the density of the air, which will change with the atmosphere of the day. Velocity squared refers to airspeed and surface area refers to the total area of the main rotor blades.